Greetings and salutations. It is Sunday, February 22nd, and this is going to take a little bit of a different route today, so just kind of bear with me as I babble my way through this. Um, last night I spent about two hours trying to do this video and it just wasn't working right, and I've done another few renditions of this this morning. Maybe third time today's the charm? We'll see. So, as you can tell from the title, we're going to talk about BDSM, and the reason we're talking about that is A, Fifty Shades of Grey, and B, I had a conversation with a girl on Facebook about how she thought BDSM, or how she thought Fifty Shades of Grey was a loving romantic relationship, and I almost tore my hair out. So, first things first, what is BDSM? BDSM is not a four-letter acronym. It is a series of different types of relationships and dynamics that you will encounter with people in the BDSM community. Uh, so there is bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, and sadism and masochism. And these are interchanged and intertwined and sometimes you're doing all six at once and that's great and that's awesome. And sometimes you only do a couple and sometimes you're only part of one and that's also okay. BDSM is not about exclusion and this is ours and this is not. It's about everything that encompasses a dynamic between usually two people, sometimes more, but a dynamic between consenting individuals that want to enjoy some more out there aspects of their sexuality. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome and that's fun and that's enjoyable to them and that's great. But the kind of main tenets, and I did take some of this from a Lacey Green video, I will link to it down below because she is way better at explaining this stuff. Uh, the main tenets of a BDSM relationship are safety, sanity, and consent. You want to make sure that you are being safe, and that is not just about, oh, making sure that, that you have a safe, or making sure that you don't tie things too tight. It's also about protecting yourself from STDs, or STIs, I guess as they're called now. Sanity is not just about making sure that the person is mentally sound when you're having sex. I mean, yeah, that's kind of a given, but constantly checking in and monitoring their behavior and monitoring their body language and making sure they're not tensing up and p making themselves power through it when they're really uncomfortable and they should probably stop. And consent. And consent is something that needs to be ongoing, making sure that you're, if you're the dom, making sure that your sub is enjoying this. If you're a sadist, making sure that your masochist is getting the right reaction out of the pain that you're providing them. Active communication is essential to a BDSM relationship and respect and trust and if you're in a romantic relationship, love is very important in a BDSM relationship. There are boundaries, there are limits, there are safe words and ultimately the final word is with your submissive because if they are weirded out or freaked out and you're for some reason not noticing, they are able to say stop in whatever way you've identified and it stops. The dom doesn't say, no, you can take it a bit longer. If you safe word, it's done, it's over. You're not going back to it. You're not still in the scene, but you're taking a bit of a break. If there is a hard safe word, you are done. And then there's after care also, which is pretty freaking sweet. And you get cared for, for a period after your scene. And if it is a more intense scene and something that you really, really reacted strongly to, aftercare continues for sometimes days afterwards until you are back to being the normal person that you are and you are able to pull yourself out of whatever headspace you were in during that scene. That is a healthy BDSM relationship. Conversely, a not healthy BDSM relationship is what Fifty Shades of Grey is stellar at showing you. In Fifty Shades of Grey, there are threats, there are there is manipulation, boundaries are pushed, limits are ignored, and safe words are disregarded. There is nothing healthy about the relationship between Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele. It is very troubling to me, and infuriating and a little scary, that Fifty Shades of Grey romanticizes an abusive and manipulative BDSM relationship, and that tens of thousands of women want a relationship like theirs. Using Fifty Shades of Grey as a step-by-step -step instruction manual into how you should want to be treated and how, or how conversely, how you should be treating someone else. It's horrible and disgusting and infuriating and scary and I really don't like it. 
you can spin the story any way you like. You can say how troubled and tragic Christian Grey's backstory is and how sweet and innocent and loving Anastasia Steele is. By the end of the trilogy, they have fallen in love and it's beautiful and she's completely submissive and she's exactly what he needs and he's calmed down a little bit. No. She has been brainwashed because he has not stuck by the rules and tenets of a healthy BDSM relationship. She is exactly like Bella was in the Twilight series. Her personality is gone. Any individual hopes and dreams she has are gone. She is catering to her partner's every whim. That is not what BDSM is about. And it really makes me angry that Hollywood has decided to jump on this bandwagon and that people smart and articulate and wonderful women that I know think that this is a healthy way to have a relationship between two people and it's not. Anyway, that is all I'm going to talk about for today. But I would like to close with this. There is nothing wrong with being in a BDSM relationship. There is nothing wrong if BDSM is not your cup of tea. There is something wrong when a book series romanticizes and fetishizes an abusive and manipulative relationship and makes BDSM to be something completely horrible because it's not. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back to Castle Crashers tomorrow and can subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.